I'm trying to get it to film horizontal and see. Let's see here. Rotate device. I'm trying to see if somebody can see me out here. I'm trying to get my phone horizontal, guys. But for some reason, it won't let me do it. So I'm just going to hold my phone here. But welcome back to Harmon Homestead, y'all. We are live. Um, it's raining and the hubby is inside. So I said, let me just come outside. So if you hear anything, um, it's raining here and it's cool. It has turned very, very cool here in Alabama. So we're going to have some chili and cornbread tonight for supper. But I wanted to get on here and talk with you guys. If I can get this phone situated so y'all can see me and maybe I can talk to you there I think that will hold okay um I want everyone's best gardening advice now we've given out tons of advice here on the channel and I want your best advice if you garden if you farm tell us your best methods of gardening and what you do do you use fertilizer do you do organic do you do inorganic what do you do and share it with everybody i think this will be good if we can get some people to jump on and everybody discuss their own methods here at this homestead what we personally like to do is i do use fertilizer but my favorite method of fertilizer is chicken manure i love chicken manure for my plants and we love using that it always seems to help them um, grow it does well and i like it but you have to be careful with it so What's your best advice for gardeners? Do you do you use something like that? Do you use horse manure, cow manure? Do you use uh, pre-bought fertilizer? Do you use certain um, plants? Do you like heirloom? Do you like hybrid? Let's talk about all this, and I think that will help everyone. Let's see here. And jump in the chat, too. We've already got someone. Rabbit poop is the best. Oh, okay, a lot of people like rabbit manure. Have you compared it to chicken manure? Is it more potent? It, does it have more ammonia or less? From what I've been told, it's less ammonia concentration, so less chance of burning up your plants. But you can tell us what you like about it and why you like it. So I just wanted to do a huge video and everybody jump on and, and say what their best gardening advice would be. Now, I will say for here in the south, what seems to work very good for us is a lot of fertilizer, a lot of water, and plants that are tried and true. When you start getting plants that are not adapted to heat and humidity very well, that's when you start having a lot of failure. Probably the best piece of advice I could give you is you do not have to buy a potting mix. You don't, you do not. Go back and watch the poor man's raised bed videos that we've done. Um, you can go use straight pine mulch that has degraded in the soil to plant in. Um, in fact, I planted in my poor man's raised bed the other day. I planted English peas, I planted kale. It did great. Um, let's see here. And I'm going to read the comments to you guys because for some reason on the live chat, I can't go back through it and read any of the comments. So I'm just going to read them out loud. doesn't have to be composted first. can be used straight. Talking about rabbit manure. And contains more nutrients than chicken, cow, or horse manure. Okay. Um, how long have you used it? What nutrients does it have? Things like that. Do you have any more information on this that you could tell everybody? Um, how much do you use? And things of that nature so anything you can do to help gardeners so they can go back and see this a lot of times i'll just jump on here live and people won't see it or be able to watch it right then but they'll re-watch it later my last live i had a ton of views on people went back that night and watched it and people be watching lives i did a year ago today so anything you put on here will help i just don't know if the live chat will be able to be re played we've had trouble with that so tell us all about the rabbit manure we would love to have rabbits i personally would love to have meat rabbits here in alabama but the problem is is the heat rabbits don't fare well with heat a lot of times so that can be a a problem um it it just is what it is so but chickens are our go-to we we love to use chicken manure i will put it on my raised beds in the fall and let it compost all fall, all winter, so it's not hot. That ammonia gets on into the soil, washes down with rainwater, and then it's good to go in the spring. A lot of people do cow manure down here as well. You have to be careful because of chemicals or pesticides that may be in the hay that the cows are eating. Um, I've not heard of anybody having that problem around here, but I have seen multiple people on YouTube and other places talk about how it's so terrible with whatever's in the cow manure. Um, I've not heard of anybody having trouble with down here. That was kind of the gold standard. You put cow manure on your garden. And a lot of people will do it not long before planting. It's not as hot as chicken manure. Let's see here. Been using it for almost seven years. The rabbit manure contains nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, minerals, and micronutrients. 
Um, it contains beneficial trace elements such as calcium, magnesium, boron, zinc, etc. This cat knows what he's talking about, or she does. <laughs> Let's see here. He'll top home place listen while driving. LOL. Yeah, don't don't drive off the road now. We, I'm just sitting here parked. We have one Angora rabbit, and we collect enough over winter from just one rabbit to use on the garden for the whole summer. Very good. The, I would say a beneficial point to rabbits is because it's a quick source of meat. If you would choose to use it for meat, and it would be um, good for fertilizer, any kind of farm animal just about is. Um, I've used pig manure. I, that's the first for me. I have never heard that. Tell me all about the pig manure. Tell me all about it. A lot of people around here used to have hogs, hogs as we call them, but they don't anymore. That's kind of phased out. We have a problem with wild hogs. That's that's a bad problem down here. Um, I think at one point they were encouraging everybody just to go get as many as they could because they were tearing up land badly. Um, but a lot of people were pig farmers around here, but that just kind of phased out. Kind of now it's, it's cows. A lot of people don't have cows anymore. They've kind of gotten out of it because so much work and people that used to have cows now don't. They can't keep up with it. A lot of people moved off. They can't tend to them every day. They can't tend to the fences. And um, people don't have horses like they used to. There's, there's not a lot of farm animals left. The main thing would be chickens, a few backyard chickens. Um, but we like the chicken manure. That's just what we've always had. Now, I will say we've got the ducks. Duck manure for gardening, they say, is excellent. The problem is, if you've ever had a duck, now we've got now eight Muscovy ducks. The manure is not any way, shape, form, or fashion that you can collect it. It is completely a mess. It's, it's like liquid mush. So, to, I don't know how you would even try to collect it except clean out their pen, their run, where they walk and waddle. You might could um, shovel it out. Now, that's why I do my chicken coops and where it's been composted for a long time and been out in the elements, the rain, things like that. I'll shovel it up and put it in my gardens and it's great stuff. It's, it's wonderful. Worms all through it. I mean, it is beautiful. The other day I was in my big chicken coop and I was cleaning out the run and I was using just a flat shovel and I was scooping everything up and I stopped counting, I think 20 earthworms. I mean, just beautiful worms all in that black soil. And um, I put it in the gardens and I would like to try it with the ducks. Right now, all we've got free ranging in the yard are the ducks because the chickens will eat my gardens up and I've just got them cooped up right now. Let's see, we got some more comments. My brother-in-law is a pig and beef farmer. It all gets mixed in a pile and we use it the next year. So you let it kind of age. So I've never heard anybody using that, but that would be, I'm sure they have, yeah. I mean, pretty much any manure. Now they say do not use cat, don't use dog, anything like that. But uh, you know, manure with farm animals is great for your garden plants. That's what people have used for centuries around these parts. Um, I would use I would use fertilizer of some kind, whether it be natural or or whatever, I would use it. That would be a huge thing to grow. The first year that I tried gardening, I didn't put anything on my plants. It was a complete failure. You've, you've got to have the right kind of soil environment for your plants. Um, probably my next gardening advice, I've talked about what kind of seeds I like, things tried and true for your climate. If you have, now I've talked about the south and humidity, but a lot of people, we had somebody jump on from Idaho this week. They, somebody else that was in 6,000 feet above sea level and cold right now and snow on the ground, you're going to have a different growing season than I am. You're going to need probably short day varieties, whether it be onions or tomatoes. You can't grow a tomato that takes four months if you can only get it in the ground in July, you know, or wherever your location is. You've got to look at the length of days from seed to harvest, germination to harvest. You, you've got to look at that stuff. If you see a word that's suited for your area, like short day, cool day, um, Arctic, things like that, where it will grow where it's cooler, you probably need to be leaning towards that if you live in a cooler environment than like Everglades tomatoes that I can grow down here in the south, something out of Florida that takes, you know, heat and humidity very well. So that would be a huge thing. You've got to be decisive on what you're, you're picking and you're planting. You, you've got to be. Our thing is humidity here. We battle humidity constantly. Like right now it's raining. We, we have a lot of moisture in the south. It's very hot and so we have disease problems. This year for the first time we're going to do companion planting. We're going to plant stuff depending on how it 
if it if it thrives by one plant, that's what we're going to plant it beside. If it doesn't thrive by another plant, we're not going to plant those together. I've never companion planted the whole time that I've been gardening. I don't know if you guys do. We just have not. I've, I've just literally done the best I could to get it in the ground, especially working many jobs. Um, but I think this year we're definitely going to try to strategically do this and see if it helps even more get the best harvest that we can. Let's see. Watch video with Joe Salatin where he used 30 inches of sawdust where he houses rabbits in hanging cages and chickens free run and scratch. He cleans it out once a year. My husband cut um, a huge water oak that's right here by my car where I parked and it was, I mean, it was humongous. And um, I used all the sawdust from that, just sawdust itself and put it in my new raised bed areas just, just for compost, just to break down sawdust, leaves, mulch, pine straw, um, manure, food scraps. I use food scraps in my garden. My husband says it'll draw critters. It has not because I bury it. If I'm going to add it to a bed that I'm building, I put that on the bottom. Then I put a foot of stuff on top. That way they can't really smell it as well. It's, it's kind of drowned it out. Now I don't do a ton of food scraps, but every apple core I get, every eggshell, every, um, anything from fruit or vegetables if it's not citrus i'll just toss in the garden or either i'll dig a little spot and bury it and then you go back and dig it up a couple months later and it's completely gone it just disintegrates um i like to use amendments like that now i also use coffee grounds and paper coffee filters a lot of people are totally against that i do your tomatoes will like it um it's acid that's what mine have thrived on i will put it around the base of the tomato plants uh, I'd be careful what I put it around. We don't do it in excess. A lot of people will say to put it around azaleas and roses. I have done it with mine. They've done beautifully with it. They seem to always thrive around knockout roses, azaleas, anything acid loving. They like coffee grounds. So use your kitchen as well. That would be my advice. Any kind of food scrap that you can get. Now, I don't put meat in my garden, any kind of leftover meat. I just don't do that. Um, but I do like to amend my soil and put nutritious things in the garden to help. So it, it can't hurt. Either it goes in the trash to the chickens or the garden. I'd rather send it to the, the chickens or the garden. That way, even if it goes to the chickens, it helps make eggs and it helps make manure. So anyways, but I know talking about the manure, people are very, very scared of chicken manure, but I've not had any bad results. In fact, my second year that my corn did so beautifully, I side dressed two rows with nothing but straight, fresh chicken manure. And it was the best corn I believe I've ever had. I think it was better than this year, but it rained for days afterwards, so it didn't burn up the plants at all. And I probably side dressed it, I'm gonna say six inches away from the, the roots of the corn. It was a, a good way, six inches to a foot. I made a trench, covered it up, and then I did rows with ammonium nitrate and both of them were the same, but I'm gonna say the chicken manure was even better. And the good thing is, is it helps the soil as well. It helps build mass to the soil. It helps, it just helps it. To me, it's, I, I like using the chicken manure, but it was hot because it made that corn grow. So I can see where people say, you know, don't put it fresh on your, on your crops because unless it needs a huge boost of nitrogen, you're not, you know, it's gonna be detrimental to it. Um, so I'm trying to think what else my gardening advice would be. Have y'all got any more advice out there? I see a few are still watching. We've got a thumbs up. Um, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think guys, uh, this year we started planting by the signs. I've had good luck. In fact, if it wasn't raining or if it'd clear up, I'd show y'all a video of my old timer spring garden. Everything's beautifully. Whenever it dries up, I've got to thin my radishes out Um, broccoli, kale, cauliflower, all doing great great and i've always had bad luck with broccoli cauliflower cabbage things like that before my english peas are doing wonderful um uh, i'm trying to think y'all help me out all this stuff's on the tip of my tongue but i can't get it out gardening advice especially for beginners or your best gardening advice um deer deer are a problem you've got to you've got to be ready to, to battle deer if you live out in the country that's going to be that's going to be your number one problem more than disease and hopefully hopefully in the next month or so i can get an electric fence for my pasture garden um it's a huge area it's i'm gonna say 30 by 100 it's, it's a good good spot to plant 
and um, the problem is the deer eat everything up. Uh, they just annihilate what we grow. The, the only thing they've never messed with is corn, so that's why I plant my corn there. The, soar, the soil is poor. It's terrible. It's rocky. It's clay, but corn will grow if you put enough fertilizer to it. Um, but last year, they started eating the tops out of the corn. So, I don't know. I would love to grow pumpkins there and try to mend the soil and do a lot of things that are trying to help the, the soil. But there's no point because the deer eat it. So, and deer, I promise you, are drawn to fertilizer. They know if there's nutrients there with those plants. They know it. Um, they'll come out and they will, you'll have the most beautiful plant. It'll be gone. My husband told me we planted cow peas, field peas, pink-eyed purple hole peas my very first year with my corn. Um, that I knew what I was doing. So, really, it was my second year. And he said, they're going to eat every one of those peas out there. He said, they always ate grandmas. You know, they're going to, those deer are going to take them out. And I planted okra, and he said, they won't touch that okra. They won't touch it. Let me tell you, if you want deer in your yard, okra is an attractant, okay? They will tear okra up. They ate the leaves. They ate the stems. They ate the pods. It didn't even make it to a pod. They love okra. They did not even touch the field peas. I don't know what happened that year, but deer love okra. I figured they wouldn't mess with it because it's prickly and, you know, but. Um, this past year, I planted some tomatoes tomatoes by my corn and they even ate those. So it, it was really like, you know, I'm getting tired of this. So hopefully with an electric fence, it will be good. The problem is, is that the, where I plant my corn is on a hillside. It's at the bottom and a hill is above it. So even with an electric fence, I'm very worried they'll just jump right over it. I don't know. Um, every night, if we pull in or if I was working day shift and come home at night, something, of, you know, when I was driving in the dark, I would always see deer in this pasture. Every morning, deer out in the driveway. It's just, we're in deer alley. So that's our number one pest. And I don't know what to tell you. Do. We've used Irish spring soap. I've used hair hair out of my hairbrush but all around the yard the best thing i found so far was i used minced onion all around my garden and i thought about planting onions around it this year um they hate onion smell i used a whole container it did great for a couple weeks as soon as the smell was gone they were back um we've used fishing line and probably i think three strands two to three strands um on actual actual electric fence posts in the ground and strung fishing line all around the garden they just break right through it. They break right through it and get to the plants or jump over it. So I've tried everything known to man. If y'all got any suggestions for deer, y'all could let us know as well. Let's see here. Um, cook the eggshells. If you're using eggshells in your garden, cook them around 425 for half an hour. It helps the shells break down faster and add sage bushes to repel deer. I have not tried sage. Maybe I could try that this year. Um, I think down here, it's just a losing battle. <laughs> I mean, you're just fighting a losing battle because it's it's terrible and now the one thing we don't have a livestock stock guardian dog but um we've got dogs but they come inside at night so there's no they're human garden guardian dogs they're not <laughs> livestock so I, I don't know is if I, I don't know guys it's so rural down here and we've had outside dogs before in this place i grew up we had dogs running around outside and there'd be deer right here at the back door eating a rose bush i mean they there's there's nothing a deer won't touch We've got a few rabbits. It's not, it's pretty rare. They don't do any damage. We've got um, raccoons and possums. That's more for your livestock. If you have chickens, um, quail, ducks, things like that, that's going to be a problem. We've even got mink because we live by a creek. Um, we have those. Now, I've never seen one in the coop, but I've heard neighbors say, you know, we had a, a mink in the coop. There's, there's all sorts of animals down here. I would say chicken hawks would be your worst for chicken. Um, as far as a predator, that's pretty bad if you're free ranging. We've lost quite a few to that, but that's just the, the way of the game. Um, going back to the eggshells, what I do, what I personally do, is I when I plant my tomato plants, I put an egg down in the hole. That's what I do every year crack it with your trowel bust it open so the egg goes everywhere that way it will break down and i plant my tomato plant i put a little dirt over it put a little fertilizer and then i put dirt over the fertilizer that way i just layer it up put my tomato plant in there and let it be um at fall time you will see a little bit of the egg in the in the bottom of the hole but it breaks down pretty quick guys now if you want a quick calcium boost 
for your plants, probably like what this person's talking about, do the bake the eggshells at 425 and um, you can grind them up into a fine powder. You could do that. Um, I don't per se. I just throw eggshells in the garden. That's just what I do. But be careful doing that because that will draw animals to your garden, especially if you have a flock of chickens and things like that. Um, for calcium boost, what I did this year is I, I do the eggshells constantly, but I used, I'm trying to think, for powdery mildew on squash and zucchini, I sprayed milk onto the leaves of the plants during the hottest part of the day with the sun burning down. And you think it's going to burn your plants up, but it didn't. To me, that would be a calcium boost to the soil as well because milk is high in calcium. That's just what I think but I don't know but it kept powdery mildew off the plants but you have to do it when the sun is bearing down on those plants and it helps it prevents it some way or another I don't know but it worked this year I've also used um banana peel fertilizer that's been great that's full of potassium that's full of I mean so many nutrients put a banana peel down in a mason jar cover it with water any kind of jar you got let it sit in the fridge throw it to your plants that is like miracle grow on 10 okay that is some good stuff if you've got banana peels a lot of people do compost tea that's kind of the kind of the same thing um you're just not having to fool with all the parts to it so any food scrap you got to me wouldn't be bad if you put it in water if you want a quick boost because the nutrients are going to get to the water like an apple core things of that nature you might could soak it and then use that as a spray. What we did was just a spray bottle and sprayed the banana peel fertilizer all around the plants and the and the milk for the powdery mildew. And it really worked. I know one thing. I've had the I had the best garden this year that I ever had, that I ever ever had. But I did supplements all summer long, even in the heat and then in the drought. I mean, I poured the stuff to it, and it really did seem to help. Oh, let's see here. What else? What else have I done? Um. The one plant that I will never grow again, and I'm trying to think, y'all, it was it was an heirloom plant, Kakuzi. Kakuzi. I don't know if y'all have ever heard of Kakuzi before. If you want a beautiful flowering vegetable, that is, that is the way to go. And I was fascinated by it at first. It has like these beautiful, like white flowers that bloom at night. And it's gorgeous, but it was just overwhelming in a garden i will never plant that again it took over um and th this is a kakuzi gourd but you can use it kind of like zucchini but when i say it's a gourd it's half the length of the front of this car it is ridiculous it's real narrow and then it's got kind of a bulb end it's it's light green the problem i had with it was it took over the garden and it had a slimy texture it was not as good as regular zucchini it was very, very slimy. That I will never grow again. Um, I, it was cool. I grew it for once, but I, I will not grow that again. My best zucchini that I've ever grown was the Rampicante squash. I think it's just called a squash, but it's a zucchini. Um, it is wonderful. If you have high heat, one um, subscriber of ours, Butler Farms, he is in the, on the other side of Alabama and he's uh, growing Rampicante squash this year. So he he knows kind of the same thing we do that like, hey, for this high humidity, high heat, this will, you know, kind of be good for our environment. That's done well. I love smooth criminal straight neck squash. They've got different types of varieties now um, of a, an upright vertical squash that you can grow. Um, I'm trying to think. I saw several advertised this year, but it's a stalk, a squash stalk that goes grows straight up. You don't have to train it. You don't have to do anything. It grows on its own, and it will have yellow squash everywhere. That, to me, was the most disease-resistant squash I've ever grown. I got the seeds from, ooh, Wilhot Seed Company, I believe, several years ago, and they did very well. And it helps you save space in your garden, too. Um, it's good. I like it. Let's see here. Lantern Creek Farm, she said, hey, y'all, we grew zucchini for the first time last year, and it did horrible. What happened to it? This is Give your gardening advice to anybody right here. What happened to your zucchini? Um, I'm trying to think, y'all. I got so much I want to say and get out, and then I keep forgetting about it. Pole beans, rattlesnake pole beans. That's your best kind if you've got 
that high heat and humidity that has worked for us. Let me say that, that has worked for us. A couple years ago, I decided to grow dragon tongue bush beans and I tried to grow these pink and purple things. Y'all don't do it. Get you some contender bush beans, okay? Contender bush beans, get them from your feed store. They'll grow and grow and grow and grow. And they're great. That's what I like. If you've got high heat, clay soil, high humidity, no cool weather, contender bush beans. Um, we grew provider bush beans. I think it's provider because the guy at the feed store didn't have the contenders in and they did not do as well for us. It just died, dried up and dead. I think it was a drought. Yeah, now, believe it or not, this was the best year we've ever had, even though we had the drought. But um, I don't know how long you've been on here, Lantern Creek, but I was saying that my, my garden was supplemented all summer long with supplements, banana peel fertilizer, eggshells, coffee grounds, I mean all summer long. Um, tomatoes, my worst tomato I have ever grown, y'all. I'm fixing to get probably banned right now. It's Cherokee purple, Cherokee purple. I've had, I don't know how many people already asked me for Cherokee purple this year and I'm growing them and I'm growing them for friends and family, but it does not do well for me. It does not do well. Cherokee purple, now around here, that's just like an enigma. Everybody wants Cherokee purple tomatoes, but they don't do well for me. I don't know why. Um, probably my best tomato and my favorite tomato would be Big Boys. I like those. And then Early Girls. I love Early Girl hybrid tomatoes. Those are my favorite. It's a good round tomato. It does well. It's pretty early. It beats the heat and humidity down here. So even though it says early, it does so well for us. Let's see here. We had them too. They do horrible for us too. See, I'm glad it's not just me because everybody, everybody wants Cherokee purple. But we have such, and I would love to grow it. And this year I'm going to try black creme. I've tried that before. It did terrible. Um, I'm going to try so many different tomato varieties, but I have trouble with the darker heirloom tomatoes. Um, anything that's colored, I have trouble with. And I will tell you, beef steak does well for us. I've got a problem with it though. Beef steak is very condensed and is fat and short and it's just flattened. If you want to slice your tomatoes for frying, that's great. However, if you want to slice them and can them, that's not a good thing, okay? That's not good because the tomato is so big and fat, you, when you slice it, it won't fit in a wide mouth mason jar. So, I don't know how many beef steak I'll be growing this year either because I ran into that last year. I said, well, I don't want to cut it in half because when you do, if you cut your tomato in half, it'll disintegrate in the jar when it's water bath. You have to leave it with the skin on, just slice it. You can't alter how it's shaped. Um, I don't like either because it's so squatty and it has high shoulders. A lot of the tomato is wasted if you're slicing it for canning. Um, but the flavor is great. All, all tomatoes to me taste great. I have no trouble with it. Um, best canning tomatoes we've ever grown were the Health Kick tomatoes. I believe they're hybrid. I've never heard of that one. Health Kick. I'll have to look it up. Um, Atkinson is probably the most popular around here. That and Cherokee Purple. Those two are really, really, really popular. Um, as far as peppers, you can grow anything down here and it'll work in the south. Any, any type of hot pepper, sweet pepper, it doesn't matter. They'll grow. Um, We've grown eggplants, they've done fine. I'm trying to think what else. The most trouble that we have for anybody new starting, we have trouble with fall crops. Fall crops just don't do well in the South. Um, that's why I'm trying to do them this spring, hopefully to see that everything will do well. But as far as beets, things of that nature, you have to have your soil just right and you have to have a loose soil. It cannot be hot, they have to have certain temps. Now, this is the best fall crops I've ever done before that I've got planted now, but um, y'all fall gurus on here, y'all could give some advice about what you think about fall gardens, but I'm not the one to tell you. I can grow kale all day long. Kale does well even in the heat, but I can't grow beets for anything. I can get them to sprout, then they just, they die. Um, lettuce. I can grow loose leaf lettuce. I can do things like that, but it's root crops I struggle with. They did the best with the drought. They're a Roma type. Now, I've grown Roma tomatoes before. I've grown Roma and Amish paste. Those two, they've done fair. Um, 
What I like to do, I don't make tomato paste. I don't do tomato sauce. What I like to do is just can diced tomatoes to use for soup and chili and things like that. So I just dice up whatever tomato I get. It doesn't matter to me as far as the meat content. You can you can can an Atkinson or you can can aroma. It don't matter um, as far as dicing a tomato. And honestly, honestly, if you're just gonna have diced tomatoes and that's all that we do except can green tomatoes or salsa where it's just big chunks of tomatoes, you, it, the, the, the meat content doesn't matter. And really, if you're growing a bigger tomato, you get a lot more bang for your buck. The, the paste tomatoes are small. The ones that I've grown, the Amish paste and the Romas, they're small, so you don't get as much tomato. If you're chopping a huge Atkinson up, you get more tomato in the can, if that makes any sense. Hilltop Home Place potatoes do good in the fall too. We've never grown potatoes. That's probably one crop that I've never grown. I've never grown potatoes. I've never grown kohlrabi. I've never grown, I'm trying to think. Oh, I know there's a bunch I've not grown, but as far as your basic heavy hitters, I'm trying to think. Um, ooh, I don't know. I don't know. That would be, that's probably the main two that I've not grown. I just don't have success with fall crops. I don't know why. I just, I'm, I have a problem with it. Unless you know I'm not big on eating tomatoes, <laughs> Elena and Creek. Yes, she's she's not too keen on fried green tomatoes and and muscadines. We had we talked about that on the live stream. Muscadine. She she didn't know what that was. I said, well, I live on muscadines down here in the fall. We love uh, muscadines and scuppernongs and things like that. So, um, she said Roma are my type type are my favorite. So yeah, to each his own. I'll take any kind of tomato you put in front of me. I love them. Hilltop, they're the easiest veggie to grow for me. Potatoes. Hey, you know, that's great. That is, that is really, really good. Because a lot of people, I think a lot of people are intimidated by potatoes. I feel like it's easier for me to go grow a tomato than a potato. So, you know, to each his own. Whatever, whatever everybody wants to grow. Um, blue potatoes are delicious if you're okay with lavender colored mashed potatoes i i would probably prefer them that would be my that would be up my alley some i like the co different colored foods and guys the different colors of food to me and from what i've seen and the research that i've done you've got more nutrients and, and, and antioxidants in this stuff so if you have like a purple carrot it may be more potent in certain antioxidants than an orange carrot you know a lot of people don't like different colors of, of different food, but a lot of times it is good um, and it's, it's great for you. So anything anything homegrown is nutritious. It's, it's just good for you, in my opinion and what I like. The taste is out of this world. Um, I'm trying to think. This year, we're doing a huge push for herbs. We're, well, I've got tons of herbs started inside. I've got herb gardens that are started all around this car, all around the house. We're trying to work on those. And I have a huge push for pumpkins. I love to can pumpkin in chunks, not, not pureed pumpkin, canned pumpkin in chunks to use like in chili, pumpkin bread. I like that. We don't have much left from two years ago when I grew it and I need some pumpkin. Pumpkins are heavy, heavy, heavy feeders, and you have to battle things like squash vine borers with those. And um, that's going to be kind of iffy. I don't know if I'm going to get to plant those in my pasture garden, but what I'll do is plant these up here in the yard. And especially with the chickens pinned up, I'll be able to let the pumpkins just run all across the yard. So that will be very, very good. Um, we've got some Atlantic Giant Pumpkins, Big Macs. I don't know if those will grow here, but I've got plain like Connecticut Field Pumpkin. Um, we've got Long Island Cheese Pumpkin. We've got the Jahardell Pumpkin. So we've got several different kinds. I thought about maybe Farmer's Market in the fall. That's what I was thinking with these different colored pumpkins, different types, squashes, things of that nature, winter squash. I've got butternut squash or either, no, I've got Blue Hubbard that I'm gonna grow as well. So tons, tons of pumpkins we're gonna be growing this year. We need all the colors in our diets in my opinion. I think so too. I think. I feel healthier when I eat fruit and vegetables that are all, in all different colors than just sticking with something green all day or sticking with just one thing. The more It's just nutritious. I feel good if I eat an apple, a salad, some carrots, some okra, some, you know, you've got all the different color. It, to me, I just feel better. I feel better. I like it better. And I just, I just like it. So 
Um, any last gardening advice from anybody out there? We've talked about manure. I've talked about what I'm growing this year. Um, summer squash is another, it's another good one. I love squash any way you cook it. Boiled, fried, raw, it doesn't matter to me. I love squash. I love squash. Squash casserole. Whew, that's good stuff. Um, I'm trying to think, guys. Your best gardening advice. We've talked about deer. Disease. Disease is another thing. If you battle disease, what do you do for it? What kind of disease do you have? Now, we've talked about things like cucumber mosaic virus. We've talked about disease with um, fungus. Fungus affecting tomatoes, different types of plants. If you've got experience in that, tell everybody below. Um, I have battled tomato blight. That's my biggest problem here because of heat and humidity. It's a fungus that gets on tomatoes. I've told you this before. Say it again. For the people in the back, copper, copper, copper. When you plant your tomato transplants this spring, spray them with copper when they're babies, okay? That's what we were advised last year. My husband was from somebody that does this day in and day out. They know what they're talking about. And he said, spray them with copper the minute you put them in the ground and keep spraying them. To keep them from having blight, you're supposed to plant your plants far away from each other. You can put copper rods at the base of your plants. I did that too with my tomatoes this year. I even buried copper pennies up under the tomato plants. I mean, they, they produced, they did well. So that's really the only treatment that I know because everything else has, I've not really had that much disease with my plants. Um, squash can be either summer or winter squash. Grow what you eat. Prune and prune your tomatoes is another good one. They do better. Yes, we prune aggressively. Good airflow. Space them far apart. I know that's hard. I'm the world's guiltiest here. I want to cram everything up. You're supposed to plant them far apart. Now, I will prune. I will prune, prune, prune. I don't leave the suckers on my plants. I just don't. I don't do that. I take them off. A lot of times, I'll take the, stem, the, the branches off. I'll just have like a tree trunk sticking up. That's what I have done. You need enough green on that plant so it will get chlorophyll. But if you've got a disease plant or disease starting, start removing it as fast as you can. The only thing I worry about that is when you cut it and cut it off, it's going to slow the spread. But a lot of times, to me, it's like it spreads worse if you start cutting on a plant. I don't know if it's already diseased. There's probably... Guys, if you got disease, there's no fix for it on these plants. It's not, they're not going to be just magically cured overnight. There, there's not. You're going to battle something, and th these plants are not going to last forever. They will succumb to disease eventually, or the weather or something. So, you got to, you got to take the good with the bad. So, um, I'm trying to think. We do prune our tomato plants. Uh, Probably the hardest thing that I've had to deal with is fertilizing the plants so much and to the point that I have no way to stake them. If you grow tomato plants and you fertilize them continuously, how do you stake your plants once they're out of the cage? Now, this year I had them on cattle panels as well as tomato cages, and they were across, the, you know how tall a cattle panel is, you've seen my videos, they were reaching up to the top of the cattle panel and going to the ground on the other side. I mean, I don't know how tall they were. I, I have no clue. I don't know what those tomato plants like that I was given. I guess that banana peel fertilizer. I don't know. But I've never had tomato plants that aggressive and that massive. At one point, I tried to string them along the top, the tops of the tomato plants, along the top of the cattle panel and try to t tie them vertically because they were so aggressive. Um, but I pruned. I pruned and then I fertilized. And they just tried to outgrow the disease. Um soapy gal for our last garden our tomatoes we put several things in the holes before planting epsom salt baking soda eggshells powdered milk or ca calcium and acid tablets sugar it seemed to work my husband said his dad always put tums in the hole when he planted a tomato calcium boost just like the eggs now i have done that before i've done that and eggs i've never had boss men rot so it must work um i've not had any trouble with it leonard creek farm we use tobacco sticks I guess I don't know what what is a tobacco stick would you, like grown tobacco that would be that would be interesting hoop your cattle panel 16 footers well one seed one world we would but we don't have the room so they're just straight um cattle panels if you've ever seen footage of my garden they're just hanging up vertically so we don't have the room to loop them over 
Um, if I did, I wouldn't be able to grow a lot of stuff. And this year's first year that I ever put tomatoes on cattle panels, and it was just an experiment, and I had no clue that they would actually do that well. Um, I'm on the fence whether I'm gonna do that this year again or not, but I will say you can plant them close together. I planted them one foot apart, and they. but now they were trees. They literally were sticking straight up all the way up to seven feet before I even had any branches left on the plant. It was, ooh, it was intense. Um, DE is another good one to put in the holes. Diatomaceous earth, if y'all have never heard of that. And that's great. I don't know if you use that for your rabbits, Lantern Creek, but I have used that with my chickens before. It's great stuff. It's like the twist tobacco. Okay. Okay. See, we don't, I've never seen that grown. I've never seen any down here. I don't, that's not something I'm acquainted with, but I could say, I, what does the tobacco do for the tomato plants, Lantern Creek? What does that, I'm trying to see what it does. But yeah, there, there, guys, there's so many things you can do for your plants. There's so many, everybody's got their own method. That's why I want everybody to get on here and chat. And I hope that the chat will replay. People who go back and watch this can actually read the comments because anybody's advice, just like the pig manure, I didn't know people use that. That's that's great because it's, it's just different ways to garden better. Guys, we have got to garden the heaviest and the hardest we ever have this year. Let's see. It sticks if they put the tobacco on when they hang it up to dry in the barn. It's wood cut down from a spear from old tobacco farms. Okay. Okay. I'm going to be honest. Y'all got me lost on this, but I'll go ask my husband inside. <laughs> Maybe he'll know. I, I'll go try it. There's just a wood spear. Okay. Well, oh, you mean to stake your, are you staking your tomatoes on the, on the sticks? I think I know what you're saying now. Is that what you tie them to, to stake them to? I think I saw that in one of your videos. It looked like sticks in the ground. And you had a, you had your tomato plants run up beside them. I think, I think, I okay. I pick up what you're laying down now. I think I know what you're saying. Um, but guys, this year we've got to do the best that we can. We need to do the old ways. We need to learn how to do this. If we can't go buy it or can't afford it, we need to learn how to garden and we need to continuously improve how we're gardening because weather conditions last year were very extreme. They were abnormal. Heat here, record-breaking heat in June, 130 degrees, first week of June. That's that's bad here. But the last week in May, Memorial Day, we had we were in uh, long sleeves. So, um, she said yes to stake it on tobacco sticks. Okay. All right. That's what I thought. I thought she was staking her tomato plants on that, but I, I wasn't quite sure. Um, we, we've got to garden. And I saw an article right before I come out to do this live um, that food lines in Augusta, Georgia, now I'm nowhere near Augusta, but that they were growing and growing and growing. So why, why, why is this happening? Prices are high. People are hungry. And they said that they were doing all they could every night to get orders placed just to get food in. As soon as they ordered stuff, it was they were like out immediately. Um, they said people would be waiting in line forever. I mean, we're just in tough times. We've got to grow, even for our own selves. And just to know that it's, it's fun, it's a stress reliever for me, and it's, it's nutritious, it's good, it's clean, it's, it's just honest work, and it's great for you. So we just need to do it. <laughs> I think everybody needs to go garden and farm. Um, that's all I can think about advice, guys. I'm trying to run through my mind and think about anything else. I'm looking at my porch right now. Anything else I can think of? Anything else y'all got? Y'all can think of? Um. Hmm. Pink-eyed purple hole peas do good down here in the south. They do very good. Miss Mississippi pink-eyed purple hole. A lot of people like red rippers. I don't know why. That's just what people like. Um, I've never grown. Crowder peas, we've never grown. But this year we're going to do the field peas as well, if I can keep the deer out of them. We we're planting in several sturdy cardboard boxes from the produce department. I added more dead leaves and then today I'll let them settle and then we'll add the soil. Have you ever planted in those before, Soapy? Or is or is this a, a new time experiment? I saw that that was floating around on Facebook. People were planting in cardboard boxes. My theory is down here with the humidity and the wetness that they would crumble very quickly because I had cardboard all summer to my raised beds and it's gone within a matter of weeks. That's my fear. 
I've used some pretty sturdy cardboard too. Um, so if you've never done that before, just be careful. If you have, then you may tell us some tips on it. Don't forget to add your coffee grounds in. Yeah, we said that um, we love coffee grounds. We put it around our tomatoes. We put them in our raised beds. We, not in, uh, obsessively, but we put them on. Um, trying to think, y'all. Trying to think. Pink-eyed purple whole peas. This year I'm on back off peppers. I canned bukus of peppers last year. I did pickled jalapenos. I did pickled sweet banana peppers, just pepper rings. I did pepper jelly, pepper poppers. I was so tired of peppers, I couldn't stand it anymore. And the thing is, a pepper is more of a, it's a condiment, it's a side dish. It's not a make a meal type thing, unless you're stuffing bell peppers. Now we're gonna grow more bell peppers than hot peppers this year, but as far as just spicy peppers, it really doesn't put food on the table, to be honest. It, it's very, you know, it just dresses up your food. So I want something with some bulk. I want squash, I want pumpkins, my beans as always tomatoes and corn that's gonna be my focus this year and then all the herbs um no we haven't we're in a temporary place so we're limited those are strong boxes pomegranates came in them it rained last night they're holding up well good deal good container lantern creek container gardens needs lots of water if you plan to grow in buckets and such yeah um now we started out growing in buckets and it was intense trying to water those it was very intense it grew but you have got to water the, especially if you're using potting mix to me personally, if you're using your own soil, like mulch, compost, things like that, it will retain water better than potting mix. That's just me. You got to look at potting mix too. It's full of perlite. Perlite allows for drainage. It's little white balls all in it that you see. The little it's like styrofoam balls. That's what will your your drainage will just run right through it, and that's what it's designed for. But if you're in buckets, that stuff it just runs right through. It's like planting in sand. So, be very, very careful with that. I'm just, I started out by, I mean, honestly, guys, I should have took out, took out a small loan for potting mix. I went and bought so much potting mix down through the years trying to garden, and I just got tired of it because I could go get it for free in my backyard and build my own over time. Um, and now I'm just kind of like, why didn't I do that years ago? But I didn't know, and I didn't know it would grow, and all these people told me, you know, this stuff you're digging up is going to cause disease, and... Um, you're going to have some kind of fungus growing in it that's going to irradiate all your plants. And I just, I stayed away from it. But guys, it works. It works and it's free. Just go sc scratch around under a big pine tree and get you some of that mulch and it'll be good. Okay. Um, they dry out very fast. Yes, anything in a container will dry out fast. If you have a sewing machine, you can sew your own grow bags with landscape fabric. That's a good idea. That's very good. We did buy some grow bags this year just to try I'm going to experiment with them just to say I did, but it might be where some herbs go. Um, they're the black fabric. The five-gallon grow bags look like the size of a milk jug to me, though, that I bought. I was not too impressed with the size that I bought, so it'd probably be better if you wanted to do something like that to make your own um, a lot better than buying it on a Black Friday sale like I did off Amazon. But it'll grow something. It'll be good. Um I, and anytime you do a container garden, guys, I'm I'm surprised. I figured I'd have some backlash off my log beds that I built. All this stuff's temporary. Whether you're growing in a bucket, you're growing in a even a treated lumber bed. If you're doing the treated lumber, anything like that, guys, it's gonna break down over time. It, it's just gonna break down. If you're growing in logs, like a, a log bed, like I showed you the poor man's race bed, whatever you're growing in, it's gonna break down over time whatever you do, do not use roofing tin. That breaks down so quick, it's just, it's aggravating. It's very, very aggravating. Um, me and my husband thought, well, that'll be there for decades. No, 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 no. Roofing tin does not, mm -mm. nope. That was the quickest of all. Let's see here. Not those people, your ground is poison. Yeah, polluted ground, don't plan on polluted ground. <laughs> polluted ground, whoo, guys, there's, Oh, there's so much with this stuff. I don't, I don't understand. I saw more stuff about carbon today. This has got to be like a, a thing that they're, I don't know what this is. I, I don't know what this is with the carbon. I don't know what this is with this polluted ground. I don't know what's going on with this stuff. But I saw an article right before I come out here to do the live stream. And it was talking about the climate crisis and carbon with gardening and how it was just uh, backyard gardens are destroying the environment. You know, I mean, oh me. 
I said, this is, now I've done done a video on this. I addressed it. We're just going to move on. But I just don't see anything wrong going out here and growing some food. I don't. But I could see a lot wrong if you didn't. So I don't know. I just don't know. It makes no sense to me. It's got to be like a, a media thing. It's got to be. Because there's, surely there's not that many people that feel this way. If they are, they're not around me. Everybody's wanting to grow this year. So, whew. I about fell off my horse. I know when I heard polluted ground, that sounds like, I don't know what that, you're growing on polluted ground. I've never had anybody tell me this, but ain't nobody ever been around my ground. They wouldn't know. So, <laughs> but, oh me. But anyways, all right, guys, your advice. If you have any more advice and you think about it later, put it in the comments up under the video for everybody to see, because again, people will be watching this um, later on. So, Ain't it a hoot? They had victory gardens in World War II. Yeah, the government told you to go out and grow. They begged you because they couldn't feed the army. They couldn't feed. They were doing all they could. All the food had to be rationed because it had to be sent to our soldiers. I understand, okay? They told people it was a, a campaign. Go out and grow. Grow to help Uncle Sam. And now Uncle Sam, they're saying Uncle Sam says you're growing on polluted ground or either you're polluting the ground by growing on it. So I don't know. Guys, we've come a long way in less than 100 years. We've come a real long way. So, um, things have changed. Oh, they've changed. But anyways, we'll be gardening this year on the homestead. So, gardening more than ever before. If you got advice later on, throw it in the comments below. I'm going to hop off here and we're going to have chili and cornbread for supper on this cold, rainy night here in Alabama. Thank y'all. We'll see you next time on Harmon Homestead.